This is your Weather Extreme video for Saturday, January the 7th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks so much for tuning in. Sorry, the Weather Extreme video is a little bit late this morning. Had a long day yesterday. Satellite image this morning shows that we have clear skies, most of the clouds out in Georgia and across North Florida and into the Carolinas. And uh, we've cleared out nicely overnight thanks to high pressure to our uh, west, which is bringing in a really strong northerly wind and cold air advection, and that is producing some values this morning in the teens. In the upper atmosphere, the trough we've been expecting and been projecting for a number of days now is uh, here, and that has brought in good northwesterly flow, and that basically chilled things down quite a lot, as you know from yesterday. And by the way, if you don't have to go out and drive today, don't, at least until early afternoon. The uh, surface map, uh, as you can see, uh, as I mentioned in the blog post, 20 is the warm spot in central Alabama and Anniston. And don't get to say that very often in the southeastern U.S. where 20 is the warm value. But across the Tennessee River Valley and central Alabama, most readings range from about 14 to about 19. And it looks like we're going to stay cold today with most of uh, this a good portion of the, the northern three-fourths of the state staying at or below freezing. Watch Warning Map features a number of winter weather advisories that are still in effect, as well as uh, those purples, which are extreme cold, hard freeze warnings. The QPF looking for the possibility of a front around the Tuesday-Wednesday time frame, and uh, that will stall out in the area. Not going to give us a great deal of rain, but we should get on the order of uh, maybe a half inch or less for most locations. As you might imagine, with so much cold air in place across the country, there's no Severe weather expected over the next several days, including day one. All right, the 06 CGFS model run. This is the upper air chart for Sunday at 18Z. That's uh, uh, noontime, and uh, you can see the northwesterly uh, fetch that we'll have, so the cold air continuing to pump in. And uh, Sunday morning, we're going to see a good co uh, radiational cooling as the high pressure settles in, the wind goes calm. So it looks like most lows are going to be in the 10 to 15 degree range. We can't rule out the potential that some spots, especially across the northern half of the state, could actually dip into single digits. The uh, overall upper air pattern begins to change pretty quickly on Monday as we see the ridge developing to our west, and that will certainly come our way. In the meantime, the surface high moves out over the Carolinas, and that begins to bring a southerly flow into the lower Mississippi River Valley. The the upper ridge moves over the east coast on Tuesday, and the main storm track is going to be a little bit further to our north. So the result is we're going to see storms up around the Great Lakes with fronts that are going to drag in here. This is Tuesday. You can see the front uh, positioned uh, from the low uh, over the western Great Lakes with the front trailing down into Oklahoma. And uh, by the time we get out to uh, the next day, the uh, flow is... Uh, pretty zonal across our area or slightly southwesterly, and that means that the front is not going to be able to push very far south, so it's going to stall out on Wednesday. I think the better chance for us to see some rain is going to come Tuesday night and uh, Wednesday, the first half of Wednesday. The uh, upper air pattern stays with a bit of a ridge as we see another trough coming out across the central, uh, coming out of the central Rockies on Thursday. Uh, and uh, that will once again create another storm system in the central plains, northern uh, Missouri and northern uh, Illinois, and uh, that brings another front down into Texas. And, of course, with this southwesterly flow pattern aloft, it's going to be very tough for that front to, on Friday to get very far to the southeast, so it's going to stall out once again, probably just to our north, the GFS is suggesting. We'll have to watch that to see because that could bring up rain chances pretty good. And actually, I think probably... Um, Thursday and Friday, we see some small rain chances because the old front is going to be in the area. Saturday, a week from today, another trough coming across the central Rockies, and this one uh, projects some real wet weather for the lower Mississippi River Valley and potentially the southeastern U.S. on uh, Saturday. Uh, probably for central Alabama, we'll start the day out Saturday dry, but it will turn wet during the latter part of the day. All right, looking out into voodoo country and the very big message, the screaming message that uh, it's giving us is that we're going to stay with a very active weather pattern. There's another shortwave trough coming around the 15th of January, coming out across the lower Mississippi River Valley. That's followed by another one around the 17th of January 
All of these, of, of course, going to give us uh, a day or two of dry weather followed by a day or two of wet weather. And then the 19th of January, we have yet another one coming across uh, the Mid-South area. And then when we get to the end of the period, holy mackerel, look at this whopper. This is uh, this one, uh, certainly, if this verifies, and of course, we're way out. This is 372 hours out into voodoo country. But if this verifies, we uh, could have a big severe weather event across the southeastern U.S. and lower Mississippi River Valley, as well as winter weather across the central plains. But we'll see. You know how it is out in voodoo country. Here today, gone tomorrow. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. Stay safe uh, and stay warm in this really cold air. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. The next one should be posted around 730 or 8 on Sunday morning. Have a great day. Stay warm. Godspeed.